Let's not beat around the bush. Killer Moth is often left out of discussions when it comes to threatening Batman villains. I mean, look at him, the getup isn't doing him many favors. However, he's found a niche spot in the cultural zeitgeist, with a small but vocal community rallying behind him, myself included. I genuinely love how his design pops alongside the other rogues. I think his gimmick of being Batman but for criminals is goofy, and I think his underutilization only lends itself more to his promotion to a cult classic character. He was left out of Batman the Animated Series and animated DC content past that. He hasn't had any live-action on-screen appearances unless you want to count that Batgirl TV short, and his other miscellaneous appearances have been less than kind to the character. So with how unlucky nearly every incarnation of Drury Walker has been in animation and live-action, how has the LEGO counterpart fared? I'd be lying if I said he was treated any better. The physical toys mislabel him, he's the only original Batman villain to be dropped from the game's roster, and of the games he's in, he's treated as nothing more than a gag. How did we get here? Let's find out as we walk through the history of LEGO Killer Moth. Beginning in chronological order, LEGO Killer Moth's debut happened in 2008 with the release of LEGO Batman the Video Game, of which he's in two levels, in the Dark Knight and the Lure of the Night. He sports a decently complex design compared to the rest of the cast, with a lime green helmet, a purple shirt with an orange moth emblem, an orange bug fly wingsuit, and green striped orange pants. He gets a single gun the same as the SWAT troopers and can punch and kick as normal. Animation-wise, he's also decently complex, with his walking, flying, and blocking animations all being unique to the character. It seems like a lot of care went into his inclusion, excluding the mobile alternate costume. This... this looks really bad. He doesn't have any entries in the game's data selection, but we do get a glimpse into his character through the character entry. Drury Walker took on the persona of Killer Moth to fight the Dark Knight, and developed Batman-like equipment to assist in his criminal activities. His flight suit enables him to glide silently over the streets of Gotham. This lines up pretty perfectly with his character in the comics, being a sort of anti-Bruce Wayne developing tools that mirror the Batmans and funding criminal organizations. Nothing in this entry alludes to him being anything more than human, but through the game's cutscenes and levels, it's almost implied that he shares characteristics with actual moths. With the main reason he was caught by Batman at all was because he was distracted by the headlight on the Batwing, and in the game's boss fight you use a giant light bulb to take him down. Why? All in all, though, this was a bold start for Killer Moth. He got more screen time than Mad Hatter, Man Bat, Hush, and Ra's al Ghul was in both of the game's final campaigns, and it just felt like he had really earned his place. This came with its own questions though, as the world of LEGO Batman is largely based off the world of the animated series, which Killer Moth was never a part of. The series did feature multiple appearances of Raish, Man Bat, and the Hatter, but Moth was nowhere to be found. At least not in any of the shows. Hi there, this is James from Watchtower Database, a YouTube channel dedicated to all things DC Animated Universe. Ben asked me to pop in to talk about the DCAU's Killer Moth for a sec, because yeah, he does actually exist, and let me tell you, he's got a fascinating history. So in the 2002 refresh of the Batman Adventures tie-in comic, which took place during the Justice League cartoon, we see Nightwing has wrapped up Killer Moth with his own cocoon gun, and then Nightwing glides away. Oh. Wait, is that it? Wow. I, uh, okay. I guess even the almighty DCAU treated this dude like a wet fart. We don't even get to see what his costume looks like past the mask. At least, uh, at least we learned that this is the first villain Nightwing fights after moving to Bloodhaven, so he's got that going for him, which is nice. The Jacobian on DeviantArt, I, I hope I'm saying that right, did a pretty sweet rendition of what he thinks the DCAU Killer Moth could look like, and it's my favorite I've ever personally seen. Go check out his page, it's full of great stuff like this. When interviewed by the Unused Villains Database fan site in 1998, BTAS producer Alan Burnett said they just couldn't think of a good story for him for Batman the Animated Series, and Bruce Timm jokingly stated, The only way we'll use him is if we can get Dan Aykroyd to do the voice and have him running around screaming, Ah, I'm a bug, I'm a bug! 
Past the Timverse, Killer Moth did appear in the 2003 Teen Titans cartoon a few times, his first appearance being most notable where he threatens to unleash an army of killer moths on Jump City unless Robin goes to prom with his daughter. Oh, and he's also technically responsible for Silky, the moth larva that Starfire keeps as a pet. So his influence on the Teen Titans canon is much greater than any other? Is this his most prominent version ever? Killer Moth does appear in The Batman, the, the 2004 cartoon, not the Twilight sequel. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. Where he's partnered with the Penguin before becoming a giant spooky moth monster, usually called Chiraxes in the comics. Though that was when he literally sold his soul to a demon. This screams much more Killer Moth than when he's just a sad dude in a Halloween costume. And he's made brief appearances in everything from Batman the Brave and the Bold to DC Superhero Girls and to the Batman Bad Blood animated movie. But he's always just kind of there. He's never a big bad, he's never the main threat, he's just... Well, he's just Killer Moth. You hear the name and you go, ah, yeah, okay, no worries. Poor guy. LEGO decided to give him yet another chance in this game's sequel, LEGO Batman 2, but instead of giving him any plot relevance or appearances in any of the game's levels, he is instead demoted to a random, arbitrary, overworld encounter. Even the police inside of the game ironically tell you when you go to fight him that he's no joke. Nobody respects this dude. Once you beat him, he costs 100,000 studs to unlock in the console version and 50,000 in the handheld versions, making him the cheapest flying character. His appearance is more or less the same as the first game, with the colors just being a bit more muted. He also gets a new gun called the Cocoon Gun, which does not shoot cocoons, it shoots lasers. He gets a new walking animation that resembles more of a floaty skip, and he can fly in this game instead of just being able to glide, which is a cool change. Those of you who are big fans of the game will remember Remember that LEGO Batman 2 was the first game to include full voice acting. And what do we get from Killer Moth in this giant leap forward? One single voice line. One line. What does he say? The light! The light! It's all he says, yeah. The fight where this voice line takes place is actually kind of neat, as it not only references his strange affinity for giant lights, but also his time spent with Joker in the first game, with the goons that spawn being Joker's goons. It adds a bit of continuity to his character, which I really enjoy, though it is clear they were struggling to find a place for Moth within this game. While it's implied he's an escapee from the Arkham Breakout, we don't see him in the level or multiple cutscenes that reference these characters, despite there being Catwoman, Poison Ivy, Bane, Penguin, etc. But to me, this seems like a bit of course correction over at TT Games, as we're trying to keep the games in tandem with the DCAU and its natural progression. And besides that one meager comic book appearance, Moth has no place here, allowing him to be shelved without much pushback. This wouldn't change in the following game either, as he is once again not a part of the main story and instead a post-game side mission. It also is worth noting that yes, Killer Moth appeared in every single LEGO Batman game, before getting a physical release. He somehow also became even more unremarkable in this game, mainly due to the plethora of new abilities the game introduces, of which he has none. Once again, all he can do is fly and shoot, and that's pretty much it. On top of that, he also only has about four lines of unique dialogue. One when you begin his unlock quest, a very astute observation every single time you turn a light on. Oh, light bulb! Oh, light bulb! Oh, white ball! Ain't nobody getting in that safe but me. Oh, white ball! Oh, white ball! Oh, white ball! Honey, I'm home! <laughs> and one at the end of his quest. They also gave him a kind of Bostonian accent, which I personally really enjoy. <laughs> it's just a bit disappointing that he doesn't get much else when there's characters like Composite Superman, whose list of abilities could fill out a college essay. Given that they're still keeping his weird fixation with light, they couldn't have given him the power to light up dark areas like Robin's suit gets and a couple of the other cast members, that would have thematically fit, and I think justified his position on the roster a little bit more. I have a feeling that TT Games just didn't know what to do with him, seeing as he's once again one of the cheapest characters in the game, only costing 15,000 studs. That is less than Condiment King, and he was invented to be a f***ing 
gang. Appearance-wise, he is the exact same as Batman 2, only trading in his bulky fly suit for a piece of fairy wings, which if you really stretch yourself could be seen as a bit of character development. If we consider that Batman 1 was his start of being a criminal, it would make sense that a lot of his earlier equipment was underdeveloped. And judging by his previously shaky animations, he wasn't all too used to using it either. Now in the modern day, his equipment is much more compact, his gun got an upgrade, and he seems a lot more comfortable flying through the air with his brand new yellow particles. That or TT Games just didn't want to funnel any more time into a character they saw as a joke. It's anyone's guess, really. This is presently LEGO Killer Moth's final video game appearance, with the most recent DC game doing something unthinkable, something much worse than just simply not putting him in the game. Before we open that can of worms, though, let's take a quick detour to his physical appearances and his one TV show appearance. In 2016, two full years after LEGO Batman 3, we got the set Batman Scarecrow Harvest of Fear, featuring everybody's favorite DC character. Gas Mask Batman. A Killer Moth and Scarecrow are trying to spread fear to the outskirts of Gotham City, making this the second time these two have been closely tied together. Killer Moth uses the exact same appearance as LEGO Batman 3, with two minor differences. His headpiece under the mask is red, and his gun gets this weird bluish-purple circle on the front, though the box art implies his lasers are still yellow. We get a brief look at Killer Moth inside of LEGO DC Superhero Girls, where he gets a more insectoid-looking mask, extra protrusions on his wings, and green and orange ribcage stripe things. And this design... Yeah, I, I, I like, this is a good design. I like this design a lot. But as far as I know, he's not a major player and only appears in one episode, and I don't really feel like watching LEGO DC Superhero Girls, so... In 2017, we get the Mighty Micros Batman vs. Killer Moth set, in which literally everything about his design is changed. The torso is dumbed down, the legs don't have the stripes anymore, the mask is different, the head is different, and this design is just really bad. The gimmick with these sets is that the characters all have tiny legs, so I can understand the stripe change and even the torso change to an extent, but the mask? Really? That's like the best part of the character? Later that same year, the LEGO Batman movie released and alongside it a few minifigure packs, which the first one mostly focused on characters from the movie, the second one got a little bit more abstract, with characters such as Dr. Phosphorus, Jor-El, Vacation the Joker, and of course everybody's favorite Killer Moth. Not just any Killer Moth though, Killer Moth with laser. Good labeling. Let's take a look at the design that this movie went with. I love the Lego Batman movie, I think it's a fantastic adaptation, it's funny, it's charming, and it gave us this design. Okay, pros and cons. I like the gold cocoon gun, and I enjoy the, the, the eyes being white instead of red, but that's about where my praise ends. I still hate the bicycle helmet look, I hate the red underwear, and I especially hate how the stripes don't go around the leg, they just stop, like, midway through. It's, I don't know, what, what were you thinking? This is probably my second least favorite design behind Mighty Micros, but it showed that he had a place inside the Batman mythos. Him just being in the movie at all was huge, as one of his only other on-screen depictions was in the movie Batman Bad Blood, which wasn't the most accurate portrayal of the character. This minifigure pack was the final time we would ever see Lego Killer Moth in the present day, and when 2018 came around with the release of Lego DC Supervillains, he was nowhere to be found. He was one of only three characters from the first game that didn't return. Him, Manbat, and Mad Hatter, with the latter two eventually being added through DLC, making him the only non-returning character in the entire franchise. But do you know what the worst part is? He may not actually even exist in the universe anymore. The canonicity of DC supervillains is shaky at best, besides the multiple design changes, voice actor changes, and other arbitrary differences, there's not much that points to this game taking place in the same universe as the previous three Batman games. Personally, I do consider the game to be canon, and I made many points in favor of that in my timeline video, but it's still a hot button issue in the community. If this game isn't canon, does that mean that Killer Moth doesn't exist in this timeline at all? I mean, Condiment King came back, so why not Moth? Did LEGO create an entire new universe just to f*** with us mothballs? Moth heads? 
I don't think either of those are really good things to say. I'm working on a video right now laying out all the pros and cons of DC supervillains being canon or not canon, even examining the DLC. But the point still stands. Moth is nowhere to be found. It is worth to point out that the Brickopedia entry for Killer Moth does say he was mentioned at some point in DC Supervillains, but in the multiple hours I spent with you guys in Discord searching for that and totally not getting distracted and playing Fortnite instead, we couldn't find anything. Lego Killer Moth has been through so much more than any other DC character. Awful design changes, being mocked left and right, and possibly even being wiped from reality due to his irrelevance but we have the power to change something. There has been plenty of speculation on what that next LEGO game might be, and while I personally try and steer clear of rumors and leaks, part of me hopes that the talk of LEGO Batman 4 being in development earlier in the year is true. But if it is true, we only have a little bit of time to do something. I'm weaponizing you, my probably 12-year-old audience, to go to TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Blue Sky, whatever it is that you use, and use the hashtag SaveLegoKillerMoth. Draw some fan art, take some screenshots, make fan cams if you have to. Lego Killer Moth cannot be forgotten, especially after they gave him that wonderful Roger Rabbit type voice inflection. We have the power to save our boy, but we need to act now. Come here, take a seat. This is war, and remember who we fight for.